Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to have a look at this Vallejo plastic putty. This isn't so much a tip or tutorial as an experiment with a product I've never used before. And to be fair, this is mostly just me picking up the product and giving it a go. I've barely read anything about it, so there's every chance I'm doing it wrong. I grabbed this last time I was at the hobby shop. I thought it would be good because it comes pre-mixed in a bottle, so unlike say green stuff which is two parts that you have to mix, this is ready to go right out of the bottle and that appealed to me. To test this I'm using my sacrificial Bismarck hull. I've gouged some scratches into the bottom of it to fill with the putty. I'm not really sure if this is the intended method of application, but I just kind of squeezed some putty directly out of the bottle over the first gap. Obviously that's not really filling the gap, so I take a sculpting tool and use it to spread the putty and properly fill the gap with it. It's kind of messy. I found it almost impossible to avoid getting the putty on the surrounding areas. There was still some putty on the tool, so I take it and try filling the other big gap with it. Then, because this is apparently a way to do this, I applied another spot of putty and smoothed it out with my finger. This is obviously a little bit more messy than doing the same thing with green stuff. I then put some putty on the tool and tried to fill the fine gap as neatly as I could with it. Still a little bit messy, but it does seem to be filled. You're supposed to be able to remove the putty you don't want with a damp cotton swab, but I figured a damp paper towel would be more or less the same. Turns out you have to do the removal fairly quickly, because the putty is fairly quick to dry. Doing this did remove some of the putty. It doesn't seem to have very good adhesive properties, it sort of just crumbled away. Not only the putty around the gap, but some of it inside the gap too. It's a little bit hard to see, but the gap is definitely not filled. Either because the putty shrank, or because I wiped it out of the gap with the paper towel. Seems that's probably not the best way to apply this. I reapplied the putty in much the same ways, though this time I didn't bother trying to remove the excess around the edges, just to see how it might dry. The camera work isn't the greatest, but you can see that the putty has shrunk down into the gaps at least the bigger ones. It seems to have filled the thin slice much better. I sanded the surface over that scratch with an emery board and it ended up looking okay. The gap wasn't perfectly filled, but that definitely has potential to be a good use for this product. Then I used the edge of my sculpting tool, which isn't sharp at all, to scrape the putty off the model. This doesn't take much effort at all. This stuff just doesn't seem to stick, so it probably won't be very durable. It's also easy to dig this stuff out of the gap. Most modelers aren't going to do this once their gaps are filled, but I just wanted to try and see how durable this stuff is. I sanded down the other filled gap too. I use the term sanding loosely, because this stuff doesn't so much get sanded as it gets scraped off and crumbles and flakes away. You can see it has definitely shrunk. For this reason I don't think this stuff is suitable for filling big gaps like that. In my opinion, putties like green stuff or milliput are better for that purpose. I applied a big blob of the putty here, mostly just so I could see how it might shrink and see if it maintained that shape. Apparently this stuff dries rock hard and I wanted to test that too. Then I reapplied the putty to this big gap and tried removing the surrounding mess with a damp cotton swab, just to see if it might make a difference. I was careful not to run the swab over the filled in area, focusing only on the excesses on the outside. It seems to work better if you do this quickly before the putty has a chance to start drying. You can see the filled in gap is slightly better after this application. I left it to dry overnight. The next day it had definitely shrunk. It looks like this would take a few applications to properly fill this gap. In my opinion, this removes the benefit of having a pre-mixed putty when green stuff would get this done with one application. I'm pretty sure the blob also shrank. It did maintain its shape, it just got a little bit smaller. This little bit here seems fairly resistant to a gentle rubbing. It would probably stand up to general handling on a model, though nothing too rough. This probably isn't the right material to try sculpting with though. As for the blob, I decided to see how it would stand up to the emery board. It's definitely not rock hard. You can clearly see the top part of this blob flexing. It's not especially surprising when it breaks off. To be fair, I was applying pressure while I sanded, but I wouldn't consider that to be excessive. The bottom half does seem to have sanded nicely enough, but it's probably still better to try and avoid having to sand this stuff. I was easily able to remove this blob with very little force. It really doesn't seem to want to stick to the surface. You could probably deal with that by sanding the surface to which you apply this putty. 
Still, it's not a very strong material and it's definitely not rock hard. Time for some more testing. I put a few scratches onto the bottom of the Bismarck hull. These scratches aren't too deep. I did this because I'd read something saying this stuff can be diluted with water and this would be self-leveling and good for brushing onto scratched surfaces. So that's what I did. I thinned it roughly 50-50 with water and then I used a cheap brush to brush it over the scratched area. I used a cheap brush just in case it ruins the brush. This is water soluble so it should be easy enough to clean, at least while it's wet, but I didn't want to risk ruining a good brush of course. I left it to dry and this is the result. It definitely still shrinks when you mix this with water. The dried layer feels kind of flush with the plastic surface, kind of like a coat of paint. I think maybe I applied this too thin. I think mixing it this thin means it would take many many layers to see any kind of result and you could probably get the same result with paint. Speaking of paint, here's something cool I heard that you can do with this putty. Mix it with paint. It is water based and so should be fine with acrylic paints. In this case I've mixed it roughly two parts putty to one part Vallejo model air. Green of some kind, I forget specifically which. I apply it with the old brush. I'm sure it could be applied a lot neater than this but at this point I didn't really see a reason to try being super neat. I quickly cleaned the excess up with a damp cotton swab. It definitely works better if you get this done sooner than later. This putty does start drying really quickly. Not completely dry but enough to start crumbling. Initially the result is kind of promising. Not perfect but that is a very filled looking gap. Unfortunately after a day or two drying the putty has shrunk significantly. It's a shame really. I really like the idea of mixing paint into the putty so you can have it any colour that you want. You could, in theory, use this to repair damage to already painted models. You would have to do a few applications for larger scratches and dents though, so it's probably not really practical. It might still be useful on smaller gaps and scratches. It could also be used as a well overpriced texture paste if you wanted to, if you were desperate. I decided to try applying thinned putty again. This time my mix was a little bit thicker, something like three parts putty to one part water. Again I left it to dry overnight. It seems to have filled the gaps a little bit but obviously not completely. It does feel a little bit smoother, maybe the lighter scratches were filled in. I tried filing it lightly, mostly to remove the lumps next to the scratches to see if it would make a difference. It doesn't really. You can see it's chipped away at the putty coat a little bit but nothing too severe. I was quite gentle with the file. I feel like this could eventually fill those scratches in with a few more coats. It seems like a pain in the ass, but there's definitely some practical use for that. It does still scratch off quite easily, but I imagine this would stand up to regular handling of a model. So that's my look at this Vallejo plastic putty. And I've got to say, despite the fact that I thought this had some promise, I'm not a big fan. And I'll be sticking to my green stuff and millipot. My initial thoughts were that it would be great to have a pre-mixed putty but in practice it's a bit tricky to apply neatly owing to how soft it is. It might be better to apply from the tube which seems to have a thinner applicator tip. But the fact is the positive of having pre-mixed putty is negated by having to apply it multiple times to get good results. I can fill a gap like these with green stuff in one go. Green stuff also handles sanding and cutting better. True, I didn't test cutting the Vallejo putty, so I don't know for sure, but I think it might just crumble if I did try. I think this product is better used to fill very small gaps and scratches, but for bigger stuff it just shrinks way too much. Also it's a little bit grainy and not especially resilient, so it could be damaged easily, which isn't really something you want in a putty. It also dries a little bit too quickly for my liking. That might not be too difficult to deal with if you clean the putty off the areas where you don't want it as you go. My biggest issue is the shrinkage. Of course there's every chance I've just been applying this stuff all wrong, but I'm not sure I can think of a better way to do it. I find green stuff much easier to use. That might be down to practice and being quite used to that putty but I feel like it just works better, at least for my purposes. Your results may vary. Either way I would like to know what you think in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions for other putties let me know those. I've heard about perfect plastic putty but I haven't seen any for sale locally. Any ideas or suggestions to the comment section with them. And if you want you can subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on social media or watch me stream on Twitch. If you really like the things I do please consider helping to support the channel over at patreon.com slash That would be most excellent. 
Check the links in the description for further information. I shall return soon, so until then, happy modelling, and thanks for watching. Farewell.